So welcome everyone to the second week and the second uh, episode, I guess, of um, Graveyard of Tiekwon Inn, when we are drinking uh, Tiekwon Inn and redoing a uh, long forgotten project, uh, 20 years old, that uh, still have users though. And um, last week we have done some minor features. Uh, we have uh, shown how to actually make it work in case you would be interested in contributions. And um, thanks to all the people that have asked in, in the chats to, uh, to actually contribute, to ask how to contribute. Um, but uh, there was one significant flaw, something that we skimmed over uh, last week. And that was the fact that uh, we don't really have a good testing suite. Um, there are a few tests that are there for, uh, uh, I mean, unit tests for certain functionalities, um, but there is no, no real comprehensive test suite, which is something that you will probably encounter often. Uh, if you will come to the older projects, like automated testing is still relatively new. Um, it is still not enforced on uh, all, uh, it's still not enforced on all projects, uh, not all projects have CI, as you will discover. But we, uh, in this case, like if you're uh, working on something that's long term, uh, as in this case, you know, it may run for another 10 or 15 years, um, even when just maintained, um, having a test suite uh, really simplifies the maintenance going forward. And there is a common knowledge about uh, which test should you write and how. Uh, that is summarized as testing pyramid. Um, so you have an imaginary pyramid. Uh, at the bottom of it are so-called unit tests. Um, this is what we've been actually doing uh, last week. Uh, those are tests that only test a single method or function. They don't have any dependencies. They're super fast and you should have a lot of them. Uh, on top of them are so-called integration tests. Um, those are testing broader units, uh, so you know, classes, modules, uh, interfaces. Mm, depending on whom you ask, they are actually using a real database or, or they mock it. Um, but uh, they do run slower and supposedly you should have less of them. And on top of them are so-called UI or system tests. Um, those depending on the system you're making, um, they test the system from the perspective of the user. So it's like complete black box end-to-end -end testing. Uh, in case of web, uh, that's often uh, something that actually simulates the browser and go goes around and clicks on the web. Now, this is the common knowledge about how you should uh, structure things. Like the tests at the bottom are super fast, you should have a hell lot of them. And then as you go up, uh, they're slower and slower and you should have uh, fewer and fewer of them because uh, long term it, it's not going to be sustainable. Like if your test suite is running for 5 hours, 10 hours, uh, which can easily happen, um, then especially if you're in a team that like deploys every hour, uh, that's not going to be sustainable. Now, this is a different project. <laughs> this is something that I would totally do in, uh, in greenfield development. But um, in case you have an existing project, uh, you have a reasonable idea about uh, what it should do. And uh, you're basically compiling it together like a, uh, like a you know, Lego bricks. Like we do, have a, we do have existing frameworks and we do have existing libraries uh, that have their own, um, that, that have their own um, unit tests and they're you know, properly tested. Um, then uh, I would argue that the pyramid may get skewed and it's better to skew it um, than to insist it because ultimately, uh, especially for unit tests, I think that the largest value is uh, the design. Like you should really start with the test and it should guide you towards the design of um, the design of the functions themselves. Now, um, in case the code is already existing, or, or like you have an idea about what you're doing, then uh, those don't bring that much value. 
Uh, also because it's actually deceptive to call them tests. Uh, because, <clears throat> I mean, uh, it's not deceptive to call them tests, but uh, all, with all of those tests uh, in uh, common knowledge uh, based on the X units have in common is that they are um, regression tests. Uh, like they test, uh, they put in expected inputs, they uh, check for expected output, output and you're done. Uh, this actually doesn't help you touch mu test much. Like, uh, if you really want to find bugs, then there are other classes of uh, tests, uh, so-called fuzzy tests or um, stress tests that uh, really try to break your software and find, uh, you know, non-trivial bugs that you forget about. Um, but in this case, uh, we are actually interested in having a proper regression test to it, because uh, especially if you're developing something long-term, then getting um, like the the environment and the dependencies change, and uh, having a, uh, having a suite that tells you, yes, I have updated this dependency, but it hasn't break the software, uh, is pretty valuable. It's all, it saves a lot of time. Uh, so this is what you're going to look into into uh, the at least at the beginning of this episode, is um, how do you want to design uh, a test suite uh, for this app? Um, what makes sense to cover in and uh, what makes sense to omit? Uh, the reason why a lot of people don't start with the proper testing and the special system testing is that it's actually super annoying to figure out the setup. Um, so this is what um, I will try to guide you through. Although, um, you know, my jungle knowledge is kind of dated, so uh, it may be a rough ride, but hopefully the principles doesn't change much. So let me bring up the codes on the site. Um, and have a tea, of course. So first, let's see what we actually have um, in, if there is some uh, if there is some, uh, there are some tests worth talking about. Um, so this is our project. I can tell you that in the old PHP project there are none. Um, you don't have to look far. <laughs> okay, freezing. Uh, right. This is the old project. Um, I should also mention that when I've been preparing the streaming, uh, I have decided that the, uh, I have discovered that the streaming software actually um, freezes on most of prompts. Um, so even like SSH passport prompt causes it to crash. Um, so I will try to avoid um, that type of things, but um, hope it will not cause problems. Association so fast today. All right, so this was, I think, us styling last time the uh, right styling the icon, looking into the icon and styling whether it's the proper place. So let's close all of this. And see what's in the tests. Um, so this follows kind of the, there is a standard uh, Django way of doing tests uh, that is run. If I open a new terminal and don't forget that you have to source into the virtual environment. Uh, but Python manage pytest. Uh, should give us um, passing tests. One easy way to find out. Yep. Now you have noticed that uh, the start was slower. Um, that in this case was actually not uh, not Django's fault. Well, I mean not uh, SSH fault. 
But what Django is doing at the beginning is that it's uh, setting all the things necessary for the integration tests. So you actually have models pre-populated. Um, you have a database schema. Uh, you have noticed that uh, it is creating a test database, um, which it's really doing on disks. So um, what what is what it's running here? Even if you have you have two unit tests, um, if you would put a time on it, uh, you see it that it's not definitely under a second. Um, that is something that you may hate or like. Um, yeah, you can see that the overhead is like 10 seconds. Um, that is something that you may want or not. Uh, it's kind of personal taste. In Especially in case of smaller Django projects, I would recommend going with the uh, standard test suites just because it's standard. It's what people expect. Uh, but otherwise, you may be tempted to use the default Python um, unit test. Now, uh, you can see that uh, w whatever tests we've done, uh, all of them, oh, not all of them. Okay, so let's let's show what's the difference. So in this case, um, this is uh, basically still a unit test. So we have taken a model, but we have only pre-populated model with a field and tested a method, uh, whether it gives us the result um, of the slugification we've covered, so like making a proper URL uh, out of um, non-ASCII, non-URL non friendly characters, <laughs> let's call it this way. Um, but we are not doing any saves, uh, we are not using um, any class or method uh, that would be outside of the scope of the um, class. Now, here, um, because uh, we are having some signals on safe for uh, cooperation with the older databases, uh, we are doing safes. And safe is definitely what makes it an integration test because um, you have uh, ser serialized uh, you, you, you have the data actually hitting the disk and actually hitting the database. And this also means that um, whenever this test is rotated, um, the either transaction needs to be rotated or like database needs to be flushed. Um, what we don't have and what I would like to have uh, is uh, all those UI tests. Now, when I've been young, um, we had to make our own um, infrastructure uh, for doing that, but I believe that it was merged in Django. Now, uh, golden standard uh, for doing that, uh, that everybody loves to hate, um, is Selenium. Uh, so, let me bring it up. Um, Selenium is a framework for remotely controlling uh, the browsers. And also, if you're using non-personalized search, um, then you probably need to say testing, otherwise, um, it's a proper selenium. Uh, but the the reason why people hate it is that it's actually pretty hard to write the tests well um, because of race conditions. Uh, that said, uh, everything else that I've worked with was worse. Uh, so I still would recommend it. Um, there are various ways to record the scenarios and how to work with it. Um, I do consider all those uh, all those simplifications actually getting into the way. Uh, I think that really the best way uh, to work on this is to write tests in uh, the test framework of your choice. Um, have a database of the elements that you want to click and um, just roll with it in the code. Um, so all those IDEs and everything else, it's, uh, it's very nice for testers. Uh, if you're about, you know, since you're developers, um, I, d I don't think that that works well. So um, let's see where the Django Selenium integration is. Um, 
So I knew with Python, not what I wanted. Spinning web driver. Huh. I mean, I've been actually working on a project that was called uh, Django Sign Testing, um, just because I was pretty frustrated, um, which um, like automatically set up and tears down the Selenium infrastructure for Django test cases. Uh, but I was almost sure it got merged into Django. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, because the other problem that was there in order f um, for make to Selenium to work, uh, it was that um, Django is never actually spawning the true web server. Like you can't really, um, you can't really connect to the socket. Um, so that was the main uh, main hack that I had to do. But seems like things work. There are provided test cases, so. There is a live server test case, but we don't have Selenium, but there is Selenium example, perfect. Um, also, let me just double check what is the difference between normal test case and transactional test case. Um, oh, so if application doesn't use database, use simple test case. Uh, so maybe, maybe let's actually clean it up. Uh, so we s let's see what branch are we in. Um, so let's create a testing branch. I mean, test. And for the test where we are not using the database, uh, let's do the sample test case. So. For example, this one um, should have simple test case. Why I don't have the auto completion? I don't know, but also one way to uh, find out whether it works. Also, let me actually move the primary monitor. Uh, to the one that I'm sharing because I'm having the uh, I'm having the window change on the bed monitor. Okay, well that's true. We can't um, get it from unit test. We need it from Django test. So there was actually a bug. I've been using normal. I've been using a normal um, test case from uh, Python framework, with, uh, which actually should work together, but <laughs> um, it's always b better to stick with uh, what's documented because otherwise you're going to surprise people. Uh, so let's see whether it works now. Okay, so let's commit it. And I guess this is a chore. Um, there is almost never anything wrong with um, letting CI check what we did. Um, still no USB-C and also let me for circle on the other desktop uh, because of course this is something that you're doing often so 
So what does it say? Running cool. Let's check it like oh, I turned on the line. Okay. Um, so how would we do the selenium? Selenium life server case. What? And ever implicitly rate. I mean, so. For me, if you're doing something like this, I do prefer to have a class for it um, instead of basically copy pasting um, this every time. Uh, also, um, also this. Um, the teardown is the teardown class uh, and setup class. So that's only done, uh, right? So that's only done once and not for every test case. Um, I do have a certain problem that uh, well, one of the problems with Selenium is that um, because it's over a socket, uh, like the communication with the server can get very hairy. Mm, and that's what's error prone. Uh, so I actually like to have um, some more error handling around it. And also actually what's useful uh, or maybe useful for debugging is um, to take screenshots uh, when you do that. Um, and also, you know, have URLs predefined. Uh, okay. So what are we going to do as a demo? So I think that um, the first thing we can do is just to check that uh, when, you, when we go to the main page, we are redirected here and uh, this part of the server is loaded. Um, that will help us set up the infrastructure. So um, this is not going to be testing models and I actually do wonder whether it should be in the DVCZ package, but probably yeah. Um, I do think that for live servers, it's better to have a dedicated module. Uh, so I would call it test UI, it's because it's not about the fact it's live, it's about the fact that you're testing the um, user interface. That's what makes the difference different. Um, we of course need the special Python file, and this is going to be, I guess, just test. Uh, it's not testing setup. Um, I guess this news um, it is a setup in a way, but only indirectly and can change. Uh, also, in the requirements, uh, we will need Selenium. Uh, technically, technical and practically. So requirements should be uh, for whatever you're putting on production, actually. And Selenium is not a small package. Uh, so let's uh, let's create, I guess, requirements test. Um, but maybe let's Google first, just in case I have missed some development. Um, so Python, let's just specify. TXT. Um, back in the days, it was, uh, you know, do requirements dash test 
uh, for specifying uh, the dependencies that you want for testing, but you want, don't want to distribute um, because that's what um, will cause issues. Um, but okay, maybe let me try Google instead of my hipster uh, searcher. Oh. Well, this is five years old. Um, I think that there was Python packaging documentation somewhere. back in the days. Um, so let's see, so for example, what, what does click does? Like what, when I don't know, um, one of the good things to just look for is how some uh, widespread, or like so to, so to speak, standard project does it um, and see whether you have some overlap. Uh, so, oh, click doesn't use requirements at all. This is only set up by. It also has no dependencies. Um, okay. How the hell is Django doing it? Oh, so of course it finally moved to GitHub. Cool. Uh, so Django also doesn't use requirements. Requirements falling out of favor, I see. Mm. But also, it's doesn't seem to specify dependencies much. So where is it putting it? Uh, it just calls setup and calls setup from setup tools without any arguments. Okay. Seems like I need to catch up. So setup CFD. CFD is the way to go. Um, then requires packages, install requires, and are there any, right, extras require. Okay. So I assume there's also this requires. Okay, so, um, Let's maybe set this up as a ticket to migrate to setup CFG. Um, and for time being, uh, let's add it to requirements. So uh, in our repo, actually, let's keep this as a diff window and let's uh, have this as the ticketing window. That's not what I wanted. Um, am I within the scope? Yeah. This is what confuses me a bit of uh, how little room there is for streaming. Uh, so probably we'll probably do packaging to uh, set up the CFG. Uh, um, 
also a good issue for someone with an experience in uh, Python development, uh, but probably not so much that you would put it as a good first issue. Um, yeah, not too many labels. Um, not strictly needed, although I would love to. Um, no, prioritization is important. So let's have a T for that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so meanwhile, let's add Selenium uh, to requirements as set. and install it in our uh, virtual environment. So let's go do it this way. And um, I guess under test UI would be a good place to put the uh, Selenium test case. Um, so how to call the module. Um, I guess, oh well, if you call it test cases, it will get picked up automatically by the discovery module. Uh, so let's only call it cases. And um, in there, let's do a Selenium test case. And basically, I think that we can copy paste what's in the Django example just with some additional. Um, additional uh, modifications. So I think that uh, Selenium test case is um, what I would like to call it. Um, it shouldn't have fixtures because, I mean, maybe over time we will create some fixtures that we want uh, everywhere, uh, but it's good not to overpopulate uh, because it uh, starts conflicting pretty early. And remember that um, test cases mostly should test the corner cases. Uh, and uh, in the once you start injecting pathological data and like trying to do what happens if there's no uh, no data, what there's uh, what happens is if there's too much data, uh, then you can enter a world where you have a lot of fixtures that you're in the setup of your own case, you're deleting them and um, it gets messy pretty quickly. Uh, so let's use those um, as the red driver implicitly wait. And I think that we are going to have a problem that uh, this will expect display to work, uh, whereas we are um, using this remotely. Um, but just for verification, um, let's have the cases. Let's import the Selenium test case from that. So uh, from cases import Selenium test case, and we will have um, we are testing the news page. Derived from Selenium, and um, I think that we need to do it inside up. Well, let's write the test case first, and then see what we can, what we should extract. Uh, abstract. So uh, we're going to check that the title is present. Uh, that's the easiest thing. So, um, this is the true magic of Selenium. Uh, we are going to check for a title. How do we uh, discover the title? So, that is done using either CSS or XPath selectors. And um, it is the true magic because this is what's going to make your tests um, 
fragile or resilient for the future. Uh, so something to pay attention to. Uh, as a first case, like before we abstract this away, um, I think that we can just look for whatever uh, H1 is on the page because there should always be uh, only H1, uh, only H1. And um, if we take a look about how uh, Django solving it, um, right, and we will also need to figure out uh, which browser. I'm not sure how Django does it. Right, Django opens Firefox just because. Um, I mean, that's fine. Um, so, Selenium is still stateful. Okay, so self Selenium is apparently um, affecting the self Selenium itself, like the browser. Um, so we have live server URL, and we are going for. Um, the this particular page uh, also notes uh, notice that this is breaking the principle of us uh, having named URLs, so we should actually um, figure out how to um, do a reverse URL search uh, in tests in the future. Um, but first, let's you know verify that, that this whole setup works um, because. One by one, always go one by one. Um, so we will uh, find element by xpath, uh, which, because xpath is, I think, the query language um, for all the problems with XML. Uh, other query languages are not working as well, unfortunately. Um, and we will look for any H1 anywhere. And my hope would be that we are looking for get text, um, but this is a blind guess. So I haven't seen the API. And uh, we are going to hope that it equals um, what we have there. So let's see. I have a terminal that's a bit too low for you, so let me bring it up. Uh, okay. So here, there we are. And let's run test and see what happens. Right, uh, Python 3. So Cases is uh, in the same module, uh, not a global one, so we need to mark it as such appropriately. Right, uh, so we don't have an executable in path. Um, so this Either means that it's expecting a different layout in uh, a different layout on the machine we're running this in, or that our installation hasn't went well. So let me look it up. This may be because uh, we are on Debian, and because Debian is not supplying um, Firefox as it is. Um, it can't be called Firefox. Uh, so this may be one of those things that um, cause problems. Uh, also, in that case, let's uh, make it explicit in search. So let's see what... Server tells us. Also, you see it. Um, you can't see it, but in my case, I I have a blinking monitor, so I have to look west, uh, back and forth. So, 
Okay, so this needs explicit executable. Um, okay, that should probably be mentioned in the installation notice. Um, but okay, let me go root and see whether Debian has it. No. Nobody's aware of that. Um, hmm. Okay. Uh, so, maybe I'm get screwdriver. What package is it in? The band always needs to be special. That's their specialty. Wow. So it's not in the archive and it has to be downloaded manually. That kind of sucks. I'm not a fan of that. Um, whether we install manually, like, can be updated. I have a tendency to create packages out of that, at least for my personal use. Um, yeah. Seems like there is no way out of this. Um, so, let me... Download it. Then, meanwhile, um, and while that's happening, let's see whether there's something in the docs that would help us. See whether we will have to use IRC after a while. Okay, Mozilla Central. Why is it not installed as part of that? Anyway. This is just a binary, right? <sighs> I mean, um, also of note, you know, um, downloading an execu executable from the internet and trusting it's fine, also not something I like to do. Um, but that said, Mozilla is um, plausibly Good. So, do we have a user local bin? Yeah. So that's where it belongs because in user bin uh, we would conflict. So, let's move it there. And see what happens if we run this again. This is why you have to have the um, it cheers you up. Unable to find a matching set of capabilities. Perfect message. Uh, so my guess, and that's uh, currently only a guess, uh, is that uh, s since we are running in a terminal, um, we don't have 
Um, visual server running. Uh, which means that it can't open it, but I would expect a different message. Um, right. Wow. So, also, uh, it may be that our Firefox is too old because I'm using the behind stable and um, gets good slash selenium driver to to new. Uh, let me actually check uh, what browser we have. So I have this open desktop to do remote uh, from the last time. Uh, so if we go and huh. if we go and do about uh, Firefox somewhere. In which I think uh, what may be easiest uh, for various reasons is to ask in the console. So we're using Firefox 50. That should be enough. But then. If Marionetta is what causes the problem. This is always fun. Uh, whenever you're going to use Selenium, um, this is kind of what you're going to encounter uh, because this is a various mismatch pot of uh, various weird protocols. Uh, so debugging it um, always takes some time. Uh, plus, there's going to be CI <laughs> just to make it more fun. Um, So we've set web driver, um, but uh, we may want to do it in this way. Uh, so capabilities, I wouldn't set in an executable path because it was auto detected, should be auto detected. Uh, we're using Sol Selenium. Let's change it, uh, whether uh, not having Marionetta uh, helps, I think. Which, um, if I understood it correctly from the docs, is a protocol, a uh, new protocol for communicating uh, with the browser. attention it actually helps on programming sometimes also what um, not not right in this case but uh, for the future um, in case you don't you're debugging debugging a single test case and uh, you can't really you don't really want to, to you know, go through the whole suite, um, then this should also work. Can't import name Firefox from Firefox web driver. Well, uh, sure. I believe different people use different APIs for that. Uh, let's see whether this approach will actually produce um, 
to the side result or whether we are using different and incompatible uh, approaches from different times. Yeah. Otherwise, you can see like running a single cast works. Um, and you can even copy paste the syntax. So this looks more plausible. Um, so seems like the browser appears to have exited. Um, my guess would be that that is because of uh, the aforementioned uh, lack of frame buffer. Now, I'm not entirely sure how to easily fix that, but um, back when I was young, um, this would be the trick. So uh, because we do have a display running uh, through the uh, through the VNC, um, we can tell programs um, to use that uh, as a, uh, as a frame buffer, basically as a as a display to open graphical programs to. Uh, and as you can see, um, that appears to be working. Uh, I mean, for the purpose of opening a window, not for the purpose of complete test, um, but at least something. So, uh, opening and closing worked. And you must have get called to get screwdriver instead of Firefox 48 plus. Well, we do have a get screwdriver. Um, but maybe it used the. It has picked up the Firefox first. Um, so that was the path argument, right? Let's try hard code it so we know it works. So that was user local bin. Screwdriver. Also, have you crashed or not? No. Okay. Um, I have I have lost you. Uh, so get screwdriver, and see whether it helps. Um, this is where you can see why you, sh you should only have a few of those tests. Um, it brings your uh, test suite to halt uh, comparably. So this is also why it's a good idea um, to have it separated uh, and to have a way executable path. Okay, this is also where paying attention will save you a lot of time. Um, so this is um, this is the reason why. I'm actually hesitant kind of to have it as a test UI um, and whether or not to have it as a completely separate package because um, usually uh, the way to go uh, longer term on this is that you're running uh, all the new UI tests all the time um, to make sure that you're developing in the right direction and only run the single UI test um, that you're currently working on. Um, because um, you know that that gives you um, that gives you the feedback loop uh, for the new development, but otherwise, yeah, nah. Um, because this this is not the feedback loop you need. Like this is way too slow. Uh, we wouldn't have done anything using this. Um, so even when we are using the proper cat code driver. We do have a version mismatch. So first um let me update the system actually because I haven't been doing that for a while. Um but I'm afraid that um 
this looks still like something that's too new. Um, so maybe what we need to do is what we have done uh, you know, with other packages. Let's go to the change log and see what should be the last version that should work for us. Um, so let's kill all of this because um, that will only need in the future. 3.141, wow. Um, that is a proper, let's call it release cadence. So we don't need the other driver, so hopefully, fortunately. Um, okay, examples that we don't need. Because Selenium Lapid, that's what I've been doing, but <laughs> they say that we don't need it anymore, so I would try to roll with it. Um, the old architecture was that there was basically a Java server that was listening to the commands from the Python client and then dispatching it to the browser, which is apparently what the binary is doing now. Um, Except before it worked, and now it's not working. Oh, minimum recommended version changed to 60. So what have we had again? Um, 50. That sounds like you're behind. Um, so if we would upgrade... Um, I don't see Firefox there though. Or Ice Weasel, or however it's called. Um, so let's see whether there is something that um, gives us support for something older. Firefox 57. I have a bad feeling that this is for modern Firefox only. 55. I mean, how old is my browser and how many holes does it have? Selenium 3.4 I mean we are not using Selenium um, I mean uh, Selenium server but well here we are way too much in the past Firefox bin web driver updated Nobody mentions um, any minimal versions here. Which doesn't mean much because it's like V8 and it's four years old. Um, okay. So let's wait for the upgrades to go through. And. Um, I mean, is really Debian not backporting ICs all that much? Hmm. So 
So 55 was the oldest one that uh, was surely supported. Um, also, of course, whenever you're doing anything live, it fails. Um, like, for example, trying to uh, get a new kernel. So let me. those old systems so that's five this is the one I don't want uh, this is what happens when you're too aggressive in saving space hundred mic is no longer um, good starting point for your boot sector um, then I think uh, updates hmm. um, I think that we should now update the neutron fs but um, no it seems it seems that it has um, installed the new version okay cool uh, nevertheless what is the Firefox again fifteen still not much uh, let me just check whether it's uh, Firefox or I ice weasel uh, so I think cache. Yeah, we are running Ice Weasel, I think. The alternative would be uh, the Firefox Mozilla build, I guess. Um, so maybe, maybe let's try that. Um, let me close the browser on the remote server and that would be um, purge of ice weasel I guess So Firefox Mozilla build. Oh, which is the one that I have? Well, why is there not a new version? Um, so maybe I can do this upgrade. Would it do something? No, it would just provide new Linux headers. So there is no, no good way out of this for me, uh, as long as I'm on this. Um, machine. Um, of course the alternative would be to run it in docker um, which is actually plausible I mean let me just look up I'm, I'm kinda don't really believe it this, this is really um, so stuck. Um, so packages and Debian. And you're looking for. I'm actually not sure where I am. Uh, but Firefox was there. Built. What? Firefox Mozilla built. Uh. Oh, uh, in a new distribution. So 
So either I have a typo or I've been doing uh, something wrong when installing this computer. And this is from non official sources, and that's why it may get stuck. So, what are you from? Oh, right. So I'm apparently using some unofficial repos because I use will cause problems, I assume. Um, but also, if you look at it, I use is actually 45.6, whereas we are at 40, I think. So let's see whether it would work with Ice Weasel. I mean, I think that I'm fine uh, getting rid of this one. ESR stands for the stable and long version, but um, maybe, probably, most probably not as stable as what I have, so. 6 to 8. Well. So, 5 fox would give us 6 to 8. Okay, so what was the minimum requirement again? Um, I mean... Top releases. So 60... So 58 would be... Last update was 57. And we have 58, so I mean 21.0 should be supported, but also let's try anything lower than 26. Um, right, and I wanted to edit the requirements, but actually what, um, in this case, what we need to do is to download it, because this is exactly the problem I have with those things. Um, so let's remove the disk driver if there is. Download the older version. Put it in over the old version. And see whether the tests are going to work this time. So it is opening the browser window, but nothing is happening. So my assumption kind of is that it's going to be the same problem. Uh, so, meanwhile, maybe let's uh, download the older version that was sure to support, uh, what was it, 64 or something. Um, shame they don't have a unified version to refer to this, so one could find it. Let's go to the good screwdriver. 
most of this code driver instead of Firefox Update Plus. I'm using its code driver. Um, right, I'm also having actually 6 to 8, which totally sounds like something that's uh, using its own versioning. So, uh, let's give it a last try. But always we'll need to figure out a different way, as we often do when doing programming. Um, What's the plan B? So plan B, uh, since the display is working, the plan B can also be let's try a different browser um, and see whether it has less problems with the matching. I tend to avoid Chrome, um, but if it's going to work, I mean... I also know that there is a there is a way to um, basically have a Docker cluster that acts as a um, Selenium grid that's like set up and contributed to automate it, so that also may be an additional option for us. Uh, I think because it can run. I will, uh, at least I would hope that it can run um, like virtual frame buffers, uh, w virtual displays, um, where you can't really see what's uh, you, you can't really see what it's um, displaying, which is annoying for debugging, um, but it is a way to at least run those tests. So we need a Chrome driver and a Chrome. Um, let's see whether by a pure chance um, this is not in the repo. Oh. Um, so Chrome. Also, right, Chrome is going to be called Chromium on Linux because it's not using the Google, Google packaging. Um, Given there is a Chrome driver helpful, I don't have high hopes. Oh, Chromium driver. Let's try it. Does it also install Chromium? No. Uh, so we are operating on version 79. Okay, um, so I assume we're going to do web driver Chrome. Uh, oh, uh, but 
that we have changed it to Chromium, but we are passing the capabilities from Firefox and also pointing it to the Gatsco driver. So, nope. It opens stuff. That's better than it, than expected. Key to happiness is low expectations. Uh, self is not defined. Yes, um, because we are not in, in an instance. We are in a class method. Uh, so the difference is that uh, self is for every instance of the class, but when you're doing basic metaprogramming, uh, like you're operating on a higher level object, and in that case, uh, what comes in is a pass. Seems like we're having progress. So uh, now I can either try text or I'll go for go actually read the docs. So um, let's try text and then let's, if it will not work, um, let's go try read the docs. But you know, last resort, um, intuitive APIs can, it should be intuitive. But you can see that it's loaded. Uh, you can see uh, that it actually loaded correctly. And um, you can also see that there is text. Uh, it's just not callable, so it's not a function, um, but uh, the, People have helpfully provided us an attribute. So there we go. Now, I have no idea how uh, well this is integrated on Circle, uh, but we do have an experience uh, with um, running it in a cluster on CI, and it worked well. Uh, so everything works except uh, we haven't had the string we have expected, even though it is there, as you have, as you could visually see. Um, so this brings us to the API. Um, What have we actually got for an element and uh, what do we want to look for if uh, if we are going to test for those and because I'm in a screen I can't uh, correctly scroll out on the terminal Thinking and talking, not as easy as you may think always. Uh, so let's see what the text is. Find element. Is it always going to be a single element? Um, So I guess the package API is what we're looking for. Well, okay. So well, I mean, this is for the web driver. Which I think we are past this. This magically works for us. Uh, but I think that um, I would also welcome a recommendation for the elements. Um, so this is what we see in README. That's cool. Use the source look. So you can always. Um, just yesterday I had a discussion with someone who's setting um, themselves on fire uh, whenever they say that the code is docs. 
I mean, sure, you should be able to understand the code, but it um, it says something <laughs> if it's the only way to look up things. Um, but I think also this is uh, Python specific, and I think that there should be um, like a completely independent, I mean, language independent API for the commands, no? Selenium ID is that I wish. Is this really the only documentation there is? No. That was not the case before. So this web driver the installation. We don't actually want to manipulate browser, but let me just double check it. Um, right, there we go. So this is how you navigate, back, forward, getting title. Um, you don't really need to switch windows. I mean, you could technically do it in the more complicated test cases, but I, I really don't recommend it. Like, try to have as Try to avoid race conditions uh, as much as you can. Um, web element, thank you. So, find element using a name or ID. And you would refer to as name. Um, does this have an index? No. Okay. So, not what we want. This web element, what you're striving for. Let me bring you more up actually. My window is still too large. Okay, lessons learned. Okay, this works. So finding an element. print e-text. So, I mean, uh, this should give us key error, but like, maybe it's like working in a slightly different way than I think. Uh, so just in case, um, Let's be the optimist for the verification. Uh, expect a list of H1s and take the one from first. And now that I think about it, um, let's actually take a look whether by any chance uh, the header logo isn't H1. It is. Okay. So you can see what happens here. Uh, there is a logo uh, that is H1 
which I think it semantically shouldn't, because like H1, um, H1 is the title of your article, and like the title of the article is uh, you know politician has been busted, uh, not the New York Times. So this calls for redo, um, but also I mean we do have this. Uh, uh, we, we do have uh, a class here that actually makes sense and could be used uh, as an ID. So uh, let's also say that we want, I think it's at class heading. Um, those are one of those APIs that I keep forgetting. Um, but I think that attributes needs to be prefixed with at. Or not. Uh, no such element. Uh, all right, also, I do believe that XPath explicitly said uh, wait before we do anything stupid uh, it was not heading it was page heading then let's see whether it will return a single element or two Right, and I forgot to put, forgot to put add back. This is where you see that um, systematic work in case of slow tests uh, may be actually better. <laughs> mm -hmm. In case of single elements, no list. Um, This is always awesome uh, when you don't have a return of the same type, but um, you know, in this case, useful. Woohoo! So as you can see, uh, we wrote our first test, a uh, super simple test, only took us an hour, or hour and a half or what. Um, but this unfortunately is everything that you need to set up for it. Um, so now we have a lot of stuff hard-coded. Um, but what I would do is to actually commit it and set it to CI, uh, so we know that we are, um, you know, committing. We are operating on a an, on an environment that works. Uh, so we have created uh, some new files that we need to add. Uh, so test UI, and what we have done is. At first, a test for news. Now, if you have really been paying attention, then um, you should have noticed that this opens the pages um, that actually require some setup and uh, that is meant in the context of uh, th this is really meant in the context uh, on the, in the context of the implicit fixtures that should be as minimal as possible but in this case uh, they make sense oh uh, trolls have connected hello but hello Peter <laughs> um, so let's see whether this will actually work in the UI um, I'm not giving the, it a lot of chance. Uh, 
Um, so again, this needs a virtual frame buffer and it needs a live running server. Uh, the latter one should be done. Uh, the former, I'm not sure, is implicit on circle. Also, <laughs> Joel's quickly disconnected. That's unusual. <laughs> um, so let's see. So um, I think that this uh, can be just done by uh, adding a command to circle. So let's see. Uh, how does it work? I have to do that manually. I have some whole hope that this is integrated. But maybe not. Which also means that um, we will have to be hard coding the Chrome driver version. Uh. Well, um, was it uh, was it Chrome driver in the installation or Chromium driver? Right. So let's see whether uh, we'll be able to do that. Um, that's going for a circle. But right now. The Docker Compose version. We can enjoy the normal one. So I am not entirely sure. whether we will not need to uh, um, to run the browser as a separate Docker container because um, since we are running the uh, since, since, since we are running in Docker on the Circle CI, uh, then you only have one process per container. So in the container, you can't really run additional um, Chrome driver process um, because yeah, that, that just wouldn't work well. Uh, so in that case, let's take a look whether there isn't something prepared for us. Uh, so I guess uh, Docker Selenium Chrome driver image. Well, let's hope it's official because otherwise, yeah, we would have problems. Seems like it is. Not that it provides much docs, uh, so it looks authentic uh, compared to comparing the documentation to the rest of uh, where it's run Selenium. Uh, so, Docker images. It's a VNC server. We hopefully will not need VNC server, um, but um, let's 
So the cell needs a local compose grid. Okay. Okay, so we are going into more complicated stuff. Um, but I mean, uh, this also will allow those of you who are uh, watching and actually running this in Docker um, to make it work reasonably well um, without screwing your own computer the way I do. Um, so Selenium has multiple ways to run, <laughs> and one of them is uh, the direct that we've been doing, and the other one is uh, grid, where you have a uh, one server that is dispatching commands to server that runs beneath it, whose are actually spawning the servers, uh, the, the subservers. Uh, so. What I will need to do here is uh, to properly launch the uh, the compose file. So it's going to be the Docker compose sync, all right? Um, yep. And in here, we will have additional services, which is going to be the Hub and Chrome. Um, we can also potentially make this work locally um, afterwards. And um, I think that we need to connect to the hub. Yeah, so it's the URL is going to be hub um, four four four. But let me check it in docs. Um, also, I'm on version three, right? Yeah, uh, just in case. Um, So we do have a container. Also, I think that I may have um, copied the version depends on Selenium Hub. Um, I haven't done that right. I have, sorry, uh, never mind. Um, that version was uh, if you would be using Docker Swarm, but um, we don't want to. Uh, I mean, Docker, Docker Swarm is, um, let's say politically, um, I do believe it's that uh, it's lost to Kubernetes. And uh, although, I mean, Kubernetes is overkill, but uh, people for some reason tend to uh, overuse it. So that's what we're going to live with now. Uh, so we have a Selenium hub uh, that will have Chrome capabilities. I don't think that we need Firefox. Uh, and I think that what we want to connect to uh, from the application is a Selenium hub on the port uh, for force. So uh, that is what we're specifying here. And um, we will need to do that based on uh, whether we are running locally or whether we are running on a grid. Um, we can reuse the CI environment variable to debug it, and um, then we'll look into why it's a terrible idea. So uh, let me first import from django.conf settings and then uh, uh, I believe that there is a 
there is an option called uh, CI or something. Um, where is it? Where have I put it on circle? Debug falls. Um, okay, so let's do uh, Selenium hub host, and that's the Selenium hub, I think. Yeah. Uh, so Selenium hub is what's going to be in the DNS records, so to speak. Uh, Selenium hub. And so, also let's um, define this variable in the base so we can actually work on it. Um, and let, let's say that mom means uh, we we are not aware of any uh, any help and it will be running locally. So, so any mob is none, and let's also document it. So. Um, name for selenium hub for tests um, is running locally um, and um, let's look up the options for Chrome um, again because I believe that this is to be speci specified there um, I don't think the docs uh, will be very helpful in this case now. So remote driver is what we are going for. Um, well. The only thing it says um, is this is fine. Also, no, this, this is not really what you think. Um, okay, uh, let me go for Selenium package API, I think. Because this is ultimately where our setup is. Um, so I wonder what service is. Um, but Firefox binary option right here we are on Chrome. Uh, so what does option do? Very useful. Um, I mean, non-ironically, uh, it is useful to get uh, the um, to to get the uh, like complete API downloaded list, uh, but it is not very useful not to have like use cases like how, how are you actually going to use this? Um, instance of Chrome options. Well. What we want to have here instead is um, what port are we connecting to? Would the service be the path? Start the service. Well, um, executable now so pypy um, python selenium remote server I guess I 
The funny thing is that uh, with every serious project that I'm doing, I'm sorting this out all over and over again in different environments. And it's still totally a problem, just in a different way. <laughs> so, have you executed from a remote machine? Okay, so this is what we want. This looks plausibly good. Um, so let's try it. Um, I mean, we, I assume, not have an author, uh, authorization, the need for authorization, uh, as it is if you would be uh, running remotely. Um, but so, if not settings, um, is it Chrome, Selenium Hub of Post? Um, then we are doing what we did. Uh, like, if it's not set, we are running locally. Uh, but otherwise, Plus Selenium, presumably, uh, should be the. And we are not going for Firefox, we are going for Chrome. Um, we are not doing any authentication, so this goes out of the window. And we. And I think that we used the uh, three force, hopefully. I'm not sure about the URL of the app, uh, so let's see about that. Um, but it, it is going to be uh, the Selenium Hub host. Uh, sorry, settings. Uh, Selenium Hub host. Um, so let's see what happens here. And uh, when we do. I need a break, so we will do a um, 30 minute break and continue from there. Um, and I have lost the console that was actually doing the useful stuff. So I guess here. Um, we actually shouldn't need the display now. Um, and also, actually, we're not doing that locally, we're, uh, we are testing the circle, so. Uh, let me add yeah. um, so add circle config for selenium and um, this will going through all over for a while I would say so I'm pushing um, and let's do this as a surprise um, let me stop the stream and record for 30 minutes and uh, we'll be back See you soon. All right, so we'll come back. And uh, let's see what happens me happened meanwhile. Um, circle is red. How unexpected. Uh, wait, uh, let's see whether we're really on the last build. Integrity. Uh, name of service not. Um, so it's uh, from socket. So the socket to a uh, selenium hub. <coughs> Max retry. Um, so it is probably not a URL because it's complaining about the name of service. Um, and we do run 
to the Krakon Bowls. Do we have all the images? So we are pulling and building all of them. So the DPU is an image skipping. This is what. Well, let's start from the end. It's usually easiest. Uh, and was ah. okay. Got pro got my computer properly confused. <laughs> um, let's use Google scrolling down. Um, full complete. So no note from. Uh, but you're using. So we, are, we do have the selenium hub then. Uh, repo web, repo chrome. Is the image name going to have the suffix or not? That's actually a good question. So, um, one thing that I really love on Circle is that what you can do is to um, rerun the build and enable SSH so we can go there and uh, check whether um, the local configuration makes sense. So let me take a look about where should we be connecting. Uh, so there we go, and I think though that this should connect us to the I think that to the host, but let's see um we have local compose yep. Uh, so we should have all the containers running. <coughs> but we don't. Why? because we're still building the images, right? So let's wait for that. Um, this can be sp sped up using caching. Um, but uh, the default behavior is reasonably good for us. So we do have MySQL running. We don't have the hub running, um, but that should be started by the server command. So the tests should start it as a dependency. If we have it specified as a dependency, and I'm not sure about it, so let's take a look. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so this depends on DB, but should also depend on Selenium Hub. And Selenium Hub uh, should also depend on uh, Chrome. Okay, so let's commit it again. Uh, I think that we should just amend this because this was a mistake. Um, let me see, can we clean up this container? Because I'm not sure that other builds will be started. Uh, 
as long as we have this session active because we have only one container since you're on a free plan. Um, so if that wouldn't be the case we would have to wait 10 minutes which should kinda suck. Uh, but I mean doable. So let's commit everything, amend it to the previous version force push it because um, I'm unreasonably confident I have a good setup and let's see what we have there huh can run in parole that's pretty cool and I can cancel the previous job so that works well um, if this will not work then uh, let's do it again so uh, restart with SSH uh, that failed quickly so let's see what we script uh, circle dependency between Chrome and uh, Selenium hub, really? But I'm... I mean... I was quite sure that um, <coughs> we should be connecting to hub instead of uh, Chrome but that's it I may be wrong, uh, but this would definitely alter uh, the way I think about. I mean, it, it is. It would be a different model about how um, the Selenium works. Um, but I mean, even by the name, uh, the hub should be the one dispatching uh, the commands. And uh, I'm not sure why they have specified the order of dependencies that way. I guess because people tend to have one browser and have Hub as a dependency, but no, still doesn't make sense. Like, uh, you want to pull in Hub as a dependency, and uh, that pulls in all the browsers that you want to test with. So this is running for longer, so maybe we have at least fixed that. And there we go. This is one of the reasons why Docker for CI kinda sucks, because it's it's slower. Um, but the isolation, I think, um, makes up for that. Uh, the, the the fact that you can orchestrate those multiple processes as much as you want to and also because it's reusable for um, whatever you're going to do uh, on your local infrastructure <coughs> so um, we do have 4 p.m. so I think that uh, actually the test is the only thing we're going to do today um, which may seem like a waste but I think that long term um, it really pays back um, you can theoretically also use those for cross-browser compatibilities um, but um, that's not something that uh, we should uh, have problem with Okay, so that actually worked. We have a code problem. Um, that's always a better problem to have um, than config problem. So, uh, was it class selenium? So I, I assume we are not setting it properly in the best um, case with that if. Yep. This shouldn't be driver, this should be class selenium. Let's do it again. Um, so, 
I feel reasonably confident with this, uh, so I think I am. Um, let's take a look at the cleanup and like whether there's something that um, should be expressed out or uh, you know configurable. Um, so a we are using Chrome uh, hard coded here. I'm currently fine with that, um, but it is something to put out, um, so, something to make configurable in the future. Um, this we are not using anymore. Um, imports should be up, so they are not done every time uh, we are importing. Um, there is also a question whether you don't want to allow people uh, who don't have Selenium to be still able to run the test suite. Um, the way I've been doing that in the past is that you just <coughs> try to establish a connection and mark the test as skipped. Um, in in case, uh, unless it is enforced uh, to make it an error. Uh, so we do have. Okay, so we uh, don't really need to make this configurable. Um, this is part of the test case, so it can go out. Class Selenium set. Um, implicitly wait. Um, so this is basically a trade-off between how confident you are that the test is going to be started on time. Uh, sorry, browser is going to be started on time. Versa, so if, if it's too high, uh, then you're waiting for nothing, basically. If it's too low, um, then you may have uh, errors in, st in cases of box overflow. Um, this is something I would make configurable. configurable. So settings and selenium implicit wait. Uh, because this is something that... Um, this is something that can cause problems. Uh, so this should go into base, I guess, again. Um, oh. So this is uh, 10 by default. And no, let's not make it configurable through environment variable set. Um, this is obviously a, a way, ultimate way to make, um, to, to play with uh, various test environments. Um, but, you know, if you have too much of them, too many of them, then uh, over time everything is just very clocked. So, only at those as you need them. Um, this is a good. Uh, this is a good uh, guidance anyway I will c okay so everything is working uh, except for uh, we haven't found the page I mean the element and <clears throat> what I would say uh, th this is actually kind of hard to debug um, if you ha would have no idea what's happening because um, the the way to do that would be to change the image uh, to the VPN version, um, connect to the Circle CI uh, with an SSH tunnel <laughs> that redirects the proper VPN ports so that you could connect to. Um, this is something that at one point we probably will want to do. Uh, but I think that we have enough sysadmining today. Um, so I would first try to do without. And my hunch on why this is happening uh, is that we are connecting uh, to the get life, uh, whatever, get, get, get life server URL, I think it was called. Uh, it was called. Um, attribute uh, that is provided by the um, 
by the Django, yeah, the life server URL. Now, this is nice, uh, but it will work locally. The problem is, again, that you're running in grid. So you're opening, uh, you're, you're opening um, the browser uh, basically on a remote machine. And the remote machine has to look back to the um, to the machine that we're running the tests on. Um, so we need to figure out a way, uh, like what what is our URL that the remote Selenium should connect to. Now that is in the Docker file. Uh, so our uh, host is, I believe, web. Yes. Uh, so web is what the Chrome should connect to uh, on the port 8000 because this is uh, th this is where we should be running. Um, I am not sure whether the tests are actually connecting to um, all hosts and not just local host. Uh, and I guess that there's only one way to find out. Um, and I'm afraid that the way will involve uh, reading code. Uh, so let's see uh, whether we can go to the static life server test case. Um, Probably in the docs, actually. So let's take a look um, on Django on GitHub. Search or jump to static live server test case. Um, this is where it's defined. <coughs> Code navigation available. Cool. Um, static file handler. Okay. So Django test live server test case. Oh, and that's automatically serving statics. This way, cool. Uh, anyway, so uh -huh. code navigation works except where it doesn't. So Django test live server test case. Um, Django test. I have a feeling this is what it's going to be. <coughs> and also let's take a look at the, into the Selenium file. So live server URL uh, is on class host. And let's see what the class host is set to. So we do have allowed hosts. Uh, and the class the host is localhost, unfortunately. We need the four zeros. This almost calls for a patch to Django. Um, if I would be Seriously, considering it, um, potentially, I think, uh, what should help, since we are overriding it and we're only starting our own, then I do believe uh, that a set of classes is not going to be happening before attributes are read. Uh, so if we would make host for os, meaning bind to interfaces. That should help. That's one thing. Um, while doing that, let's also take a look at Selenium. I almost think that this deserves a blog post again. <laughs> uh, like, 
Y, and there is a selenium test case. So we could theoretically use this selenium test case. Uh, the problem is that this has a lot of assumptions about browsers and I don't see a good way how to um, make this work remote. But what's good here, uh, so you, you can see you can see it here. Uh, what they're paying attention to is that uh, you can list browsers and it will uh, dynamically create test cases for all the browsers you specify. Um, so this is a very cool meta programming, uh, but and I'm pretty useful. But I don't see a good way how to call a remote grid. So I think that this is maybe for asking in um, a Django mailing list, since we have tried to Google and haven't found it, um, will not help us in our case. But nevertheless, uh, we, w with this we should be connected to all ports. Doesn't uh, sort out the fact that um, when we are in the test case, going for the live server URL. The live server URL uh, is going to be the one from the um, uh, from the local Django as opposed to from the uh, a host specified um, in the config. So, so I And this is only true. This is only true when we want to connect to ourselves from Selenium, because otherwise we are really connecting locally. We are not uh, switching it from. Uh, we are not uh, pushing it f uh, from the hub. Um, so I believe that this calls uh, again uh, for an environment variable, um, which would be called. Um, Selenium, I guess, project host, yeah, uh, which by default, when it's none, um, then I think uh, let's let um, Django construct it as normally. Uh, so uh host name to which the browser run by um selenium hub should connect to uh, if none rely on default Django settings as we are running locally. Um so this will leave at none uh, for what we're doing here. Um, but for circle, this is going to be hard coded to web. This is also what you need to do if you would be running locally uh, in the cluster. So. Now the question is where to correctly override uh, the live server URL and for that I would go back um, to the code and see uh, what uh, where is Django doing that uh, which was in the live server. Huh, disable the implicit wait. I'm not the only person that doesn't don't like it apparently. <clears throat> um, right, so that was, yep. Yeah, 
it's a close property. So I think that we can override it and in Python 3 I mean I believe um, because this is hard code uh, this is copy pasting and hard coding uh, I think I don't like um, but I believe that if we don't have the proper settings, so the selenium um, uh, was it project or web URL? Um, project host, right? Would be better to have probably Django project. Uh, also, one of the reasons I kind of don't always rely on autocomplete is that if you don't remember uh, what you're writing for the second or third time, um, it may be a hint uh, that what you're like that your naming is not correct. <laughs> that maybe you should uh, set something else up. Um, you know, your domain, uh, your domain uh, dictionary is broken basically. But then this also relies on you uh, doing stuff sufficiently um, often uh, that you don't forget uh, all the things between the one week episodes. So, yeah. Either work more or be younger. Um, and in this case, uh, we can call um, the super and live server URL. Uh, so, if this would change in the super class, uh, do get updated. Alright, you unfortunately need to hard code because this doesn't take hostages. Um, we will still be on the same port. Also of note, I hope that the port is the same as the normal live port because otherwise we would need to set up the uh, Docker networking links. Um, that is needed to keep in mind. Um, but the host in this case would be the uh, settings uh, Selenium project host. And in this case, I would actually do a separate commit because I'm not very confident um, in those changes. So um, at um, proper config configuration for connecting to remote selenium instance fun let's see so there is a term called shotgun programming um, where you take a shotgun and you shoot the code until it behaves correctly this is basically it. Uh, looked very down upon by Academia. What can I tell you? Um, let me flush the, I guess, last e given time. T port programming. This is all we are. All right, so um, just in case, also, um, I think that this is roughly eight characters, is it? Uh, okay, for some reason there is a convention uh, that a line shouldn't be longer than 80 characters. Uh, this is because old terminals had uh, 80 characters width. So I consider it kind of guideline. Let's call it a guideline. Uh, but it is good to keep in mind. It is more readable uh, in languages where you can break stuff down like this. You know, um, it works better. Um, 
And again, this is something that you can amend, so you know, why not do gardening? Okay, we are still running. And we are over the estimated time. That usually means progress. The tea still uh, tastes like charcoal, so it's perfect. That's what people aim for. Class property is not defined. What? That isn't the built in uh, built in Python function. Uh, oh, this is a jungle that decorator. Okay. Stuff you got used to in other languages. Um, so in famous utils, let's amend and commit, push it. And while we'll do, while we are doing that, and force pushing because we've been doing quite a few of amends. Um, let's see whether it actually still actually works for us locally. Um, right, uh, so this is also good to know. So since we are working with a database and um, there is a real database being uh, connect, uh, being created and dropped at the background, um, if your tests fail in a very unexpected way, the database may st stay there and then this is what you get. I kind of find it annoying, um, but it's probably a good safeguard. Um, I'd actually take a look whether there is any way to have a flag uh, that would just silence it. Uh, can you do a help test? Where you know where you would just do dash dash uh, if database exists, uh, kill it with fire and don't bother me. Um, yeah, item is not a command. So, trace back top level. The annoying thing on this, um, one of the reasons why I want it, is that if you would have it in a CI that doesn't uh, set up the whole context, uh, then you can get, get stuck on this. It's like, you uh, keep database between runs. Yeah, it, it would wait for the input, so. I guess the no input should be um, preserving this, but no idea. Okay, at least we know that the blind programming is really not working. Uh, swing object is not callable. Right, uh, because uh, it is a property, it's not a method. So this is indeed uh, not callable. So in the interest of time, let it run on the background um, and see what happens locally. Invalid argument. Well, so one way to also do uh, all of this would, uh, was, would be to, this is the problem when you have to complicate a test suite. Um, you kind of need a test suite for the test suite uh, because all, how else you can rely on this. Um, let me, right, everything return here. Oh, you actually need to return the value. 
This is only affecting the local run though. So we're good, at least for the local tests. So let's see what happens remotely um, among those changes. I was hoping that I would also do some greenfield today. Um, <coughs> one of the things that I want to do with this is um, to basically have an annotated archive, I guess, uh, for what I'm doing here. So it's actually searchable because this is the among other things, this is the main things, the thing that I hate on videos. Uh, it's looking something up is terrible. Um, post processing is terrible. I hate it, um, but uh, I will try to do some. Um, but uh, building a website for this and make this available for the learning, uh, I think it may make sense to do it as part of a series, uh, maybe as a special episode. But apparently not today. So, um, well. In a week, or in, this, in, a, in some special travel episode. This is the one that should be passing first. Uh, one of the reasons is that... Uh, I I think that maybe in the future cutting the segments uh, should be helpful peop for, for people to have like short segments focused on particular tasks or refactors. Um, but lessons learned from a podcast that I've been doing a decade ago or so uh, is that I hate listening to myself. Um, so I'm definitely not sure I'll be up for it. Um, so this is not working remotely. Um, just to be sure, uh, are we... When running locally, local, is it correctly opening the browser? Yeah, it does. So this is what you should see. And it was wow. Also, it was locally connecting to four O's. Um, but I mean, why not? Yeah, for I mean, four zeros, not four O's. Um, also, let's make sure that it doesn't interact with uh, the other tests and let's run all of it. But seems that something is broken here. So, <coughs> since the only, I mean, only only difference should be the Selenium project host with a port. Pew. Okay, so maybe it will come to what we've been talking about. Um, let's do a debug version and VPN routing. Uh, I mean, not VPN, VCN. Uh, that's annoying. Let me say that. Uh, Maybe let's just make sure that this is reachable. Wait, uh, let's see what. Let's see whether we have all the proper network links as well. Uh, gosh, I forgot how the links are created. This needs to talk to DP, right? Because it. Close locally. Uh, let me just look it up to be sure. Um, but I, I think that it sets up available routing and we may need to add it there because that's what's uh, not making it view the whole network. I'm afraid that's intentional. Uh, so let's see whether there is oh, links and external links. Legacy feature of Docker. Ooh, wow. Uh, no, we don't want to share labels. Um, also, I wanted to see what the networks are, but okay. 
Uh, by default, any service can reach any other service at that service names. And DB is alias. Containers for the linked service are reachable as a whole name identical to the alias or the service name is no alias was satisfied. So this I mean A this should be needed, B this shouldn't um this should work, but so A thanks to D B um B just to make sure and there is a selenium hub uh and there is Chrome. And is it unidirectional or bidirectional? Because otherwise, this also needs to be able to look at web. Um, let's do this as a separate comment again. Um, so debug Docker networking. I mean, this shouldn't be needed, uh, but maybe in case, uh, I, uh, unless it works in a way that when you have this uh, link specified, then you override the default behavior. Um, this also looks like I should uh, maybe try to uh, get this running locally in Docker form I mean, I mean uh, docker compose which actually on the linux shouldn't be that hard uh i th think that if on the background this shouldn't interact with any ports i think um if on the background you would go run those uh I think that we may have problems with huh. uh we may have problems with um the circle connection and also apparently I have outdated uh docker login here. So uh, let me let me stop sh screen sharing now, um, just for me to log in. Uh, give me a sec. Oh, so I hope that you see an empty screen, uh, because otherwise I'll be an unhappy panda. And um, this also needs me to properly access my keychain. which I do have a working biometric for uh, because I have an open lit that's unusual for me so let me go here and log in can I need to submitting a password to the console but hey Login succeeded. So let me turn the screen sharing back on. And see whether the Docker Compose is doing something useful. And it does. Hopefully, it will not kill the streaming. Um, meanwhile, on the CI. Right, this is going to be the circle dependency, right? That I have fixed. Yeah. So uh, let's fix that. <coughs> when the deb when debugging CI first pushes your daily breaths, no way around it. I mean, I'll, unless you want to have a zillion comments of uh, trying. 
Uh, that's what Mercurial was for. Alright, so meanwhile, let's see how we are doing here. Oh, it will take a while. Um, I've been trying to convince people to give me optic cable, but um, so far not rich enough. Okay. You know that you're working with Docker quite a bit when you have dedicated SSD disks for them. Um, first time this happened to me. Wow! That I haven't expected. <laughs> uh, so hopefully this is hopefully this is what will happen. Also on the other side. Uh, but I mean, this is so cool that it's uh, it looks like worth documenting. I mean, at least for Linux people, um, there are always problems on other systems. Because, um, you know, on Mac you don't have the native virtualization, so you have to play with networks more. Windows is Windows. Uh, Scripting there is always, um, I mean, it still requires a Windows specific knowledge, let's call it this way. Okay, um, so if you're done with it. Um, then I will need to slowly go for today, because it's uh, board game o'clock, but, oh, never mind, um, so we still can't locate element, and we also don't see what there is, um, we have been successful at opening the page though, uh, so I do wonder what's happening there. And oh, let's try with the SSH um, and see whether it's properly reachable. But it should be because we've been able to like successfully do this locally. But I will tell you why, uh, because this is not using the circle configuration, uh, because you're not passing in the and uh, the variable for importing the uh, for for uh, the, to to make it think that it runs with the with this remote configuration. I've been suspicious that it works. It works too well, um, and that one is I think CI. To two, yeah. Let's see what happened here. I'm, I'm not sure if there is anything. I'm not sure how much of circle specific stuff is there. I mean, Circle CI environment detected it importance importing Circle settings. So we have imported those. Um, I mean, if we would print here, uh, it maybe would print. I'm not entirely sure, but we can try. Um, let's do it the old fashioned way. Um, I think that uh, 
if I remember this correctly, and it kind of makes sense. Um, if your tests pass, uh, then the test runner collects all the standard output, so you have uncluttered output, and if it fails, then uh, it should uh, show you something. Uh, but also we are apparently running something else than um, what I'm doing, because this should definitely fail. Huh. So we are running Docker Compose Circle. That is building local. I mean, do we need to rebuild it? Um, My hope would be that no, but... Permission denied for the .tp Well, of course, because that's where our database is. Uh, do I really need to do that as a root? That would explain stuff, but it's still weird. Mm, so let's see. I mean, one way to fix this would be to have a, a proper way to do that would be to have a to have for us a proper um, Docker file that wouldn't be adding code, adding dot to code, uh, but will be mounting it as a volume, which I'm not sure I'm doing here. Uh, so let's run. Are we, are we in the correct director or do we need to do it in a more complicated way? Um, Alright, we don't, but um, RM is a good point. Don't forget to clean up after you. Now this is more plausible. Uh, and this is the waiting for the database, I guess. But the DB is starting, uh, so I guess we're connecting too fast, And but at the same time, MySQL is not running. MySQL is running, so what's the problem? And there is a Docker entry point. So what is Circle connecting to? Um, it is connecting to Circle underscore Right, a uh, single circle underscore test as opposed to our test um, because that's how the MySQL database uh, is set up. In which case we actually don't need the DB image. <laughs> okay, uh, so in order for us to make this work, uh, we would really need to have a additional config. Uh, I mean, both circle YAML and uh, the local.py. 
uh, to correctly wire stuff. So instead, meanwhile, let's see where we can connect. So. So. Um, no, this is a different terminal than I wanted. I'm quite sure about it. Yep. Uh, so let us connect. Um, and what we can do here? Uh, we can run in the Chrome image pink to web image and we want to do that using the circle compose uh, in which yes um, is there um, am I in the correct directory no I'm not in which yes uh, maybe I should also create a normal circle that um, will allow for normal usage at least for testing <coughs> oh see iron timer error. there is no pink in the container wow okay As well as no Telnet. This is going to be a very interesting debugging. And this is what you have when you have a very minimalistic Linux. Um, We theoretically do have mm, uh, oh, well, this won't work as well. Let's see what's in has been. Whether there is something that's useful. Um Huh. Not even tell not. So any of those actually work over network? <laughs> uh Well, no, this control doesn't help us. Um, can't see anything. This is tricky. So maybe we will end up with the uh, debug images. What is this domain day I'm doing? This looks plausible. Oh, come on. Um, I 
well. This is for setting the um, local names that will not help us. But at least we should be able to verify it from the other side. Ah, okay. verify it from the other side and um, so we're on the web pink chrome. Which works. And I think there is a reasonable assumption that uh, it goes back the other way. Um, I do wonder whether the ports are correctly exposed and rooted. That is the other thing that may cause problems, although in that case I would expect that the Chrome would not even open the the root file. It's like you wouldn't connect to the hubsock. I mean you connect to the hubsocket, but if you say open URL it should return an error. Um you know, not not open a weird page. So let's take a look at. I think again the compose. The port is exposed. Here is the port is also exposed. Right. Do you remember what I said about the live port? So that is something to verify. Uh, so we have been working under the assumption that uh, the port uh, that we are opening in the Selenium test case uh, is going to be the same as the live test case, even though it's another chat. And uh, I think it's time to verify that assumption. Um, so if we would just kill it here and let's um, use the normal. This is where we are running the tests normally. Um, Then, well, I, we have an invite syntax because I screwed something up. Um, sure. Bad copy pasting skills. Well, this should give us. Um, the idea at least about whether we do have a um, whether we do have a correct network binding um, and of course editors smart editors being too smart <laughs> so what I think that this is a sign that this coding session should end, um, if I'm not able to match parentheses correctly. We 
do have an error and the error says something completely else. So there we go. This is the problem. And then the question is whether this part is static. Uh, because if not, then we have a problem. It's not static. Okay. <coughs> So for context, what is happening is that in tests we are binding to a new and random port. Um, the port though uh, that we are connecting to from the outside uh, to the test, it must be static. Otherwise uh, we are not able to route the ports through because the ports needs to be explicitly stated in the Docker Compose. And um, I think that the reason why it's semi-random is that actually if you're running this locally, um, if you attach to a port and then they attach, or um, the process is stuck, uh, it can take a while for the ports to get available again. Uh, so this really needs to be scoped uh, for the CI. It will potentially cause problems for the local development. And I'm not sure how to sort it out well. Uh, I think that for the purpose of a, a circle, it can be uh, static. Uh, but uh, there, I'm also not sure uh, how to pass it to Django. So uh, let's take a look. Uh, so this, I th believe, is the life server okay threads uh, live server threads port so apparently when creating the thread we can pass in port If binding to ports are assembly port allocated by the operating system. Um, so this is the one that's going to create problems. Okay, so the port is something that we maybe can specify. Um, well, let's pick one at random. It's high enough. It can, like, this can cause interim failures uh, in case someone else is going to bind, bind there. And, uh, yeah, this, this is not bad proof. Um, let me also just double check that, um, when we are having the port, it is the one that we are passing to the thread. So server thread is create server threads. And you're passing in the port. So the port here is where uh, host and port for where the live server is. Um, let us also see whether this is going to sufficiently work uh, if we have multiple subclasses. Um, but let's try to have this also, let's make it nicer. And in that case, um, we need to mark those in the Docker Compose file and bind those ports to the other network. So let's see how we fare with that. This is suboptimal. Um, but I do believe that you can't expose all the ports from a single machine to the network. Um, let's take a look. But I would believe it's for security reasons because um, exposing all ports could do pretty horrible stuff to your container. 
Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if they just would want to disallow it. Uh, but for uh, like for exposing dynamically allocated ports, uh, that is causing problems. Um, export posts. <coughs> Port making is compatible with the network cost. Okay. Um, well. Uh, but you can expose ranges. Then this should work. Uh, but I'm actually not sure from which range the ports are assigned. Um, so maybe researching that on the OS level. Also, it's going to be OS specific. Um, but we're running in a defined container, so that should potentially plausibly work. Um, was there a note? Like who is assigning the port? Um, there was something about binding to the OS ports. Somewhere, yeah, self HTTP server address, uh, which is create server where the click is also not working. Chat it was get server. Okay, so um, chat it was get server uh, is going to get us something. Um, let's see what it is. Uh, well, internet search not always optimal. It's used for socket allocation, is what we are uh, looking for. Uh, so, reusing address. Uh, I mean, let's just look up port. Uh, run server address. Okay, what is a HTTPD cast in this context? Um, probably was the server that got there from simple server. So was Griff package. Well, if I would have um, editor properly set up and linked, uh, that's what you're going to do. Aha, uh -huh. so it's using the reference one. Okay. Animations of ports. No, I think even host and port example is which it asks for port. So if it's zero, then we 
should look into the implementation. Well, okay. But first let's look into how circle works. And maybe we can leave it for the next time for the refactor. Stuff you learn as always. Uh, so still fails. And I'm running out of time for today, so I guess that this needs to wait for the next time. But otherwise, um, should be ready. Wait, I have left it with the value error. That's kind of annoying. Um, but. Uh, otherwise it means that we at least got there and it looks like a plausibly good call um, so either way um, let's push it still for time being and let's make a ticket for this Clean up, clean up. Um, so randomize. Well, do not hard code port for attaching test live server. And what this needs is um, delete the hard coded port. Hard coded port from Selenium class uh, and figure out the assigned port range and allow it in Django Compose. Um, this is actually a good first task for someone because it's mostly just research. So uh, if some of the people that wanted to contribute are watching, um, this may be a good first issue for you. Try to figure this out. Um, otherwise, I mean, unless it will cause on circle um, the, you know, um, flakiness of the tests, then um, this is not exactly highest priority. So let's see. We should know in 30 seconds. Um, so one of the juniors at work told me how uh, the, when they were entering programming they had no idea that a single uh, red green icon can cause so much emotions. And they do. <laughs> Are we there yet? Are we there yet? It works longer, so that's hopeful. And still no such element. So this was not the problem, although it's most probably connecting to the proper host and proper port. 330, 33. That is correct. That is where this should live. And this 
this is where the board should be exposed. Well, so not figured out. Uh, I will wrap up for today. Uh, so this is where we are going to start next time. Um, trying to figure out how to connect those properly and debug uh, Selenium on Circle CI. Uh, so as you can see, you know, proper test setup takes a while. Um, but as I'm saying, and I hope to demonstrate in the future, totally worth it. Um, I think that this will going to bug me, but still, uh, worst case, uh, we'll see you next Thursday, 1 p.m. Central European time. Um, if it will bug me more than earlier, as usually, um, announce on my Twitter. Uh, I hope this is useful. I also hope that um, you can actually hear me and that is useful to anyone. Um, either way, uh, let me know. Um, Twitter is probably still the best, pla best place until we have uh, the website for this. And see you next week.